so many iPad and iPhone users. Now, does anybody know, we're going to talk a little bit about Siri. Does everyone know if they have, if their device has Siri or not? Does anybody know that they don't have Siri or not sure? Does it have the voice? Yeah, the voice. Is there, is there a voice that's Siri? That's well, <laughs> you can blame, if you hear voices in your head, you can blame it on Siri. If you hear voices in your head, I blame it on Siri all the time. And uh, ironic, Siri is my girlfriend, but the nice thing is in the most recent version, Siri can actually be a, ma a man's voice. So you guys can change Siri over to a man's voice if you want. I prefer the female voice. <laughs> so is there anybody here that doesn't have Siri that they know or are not sure? Fantastic. And don't, don't be afraid to, even on your iPhone. So if it's an iPhone 4S or newer, it's Siri. And on the iPad, it's the... Only the original iPad and the iPad 2 are the only ones that don't have Siri. So the way you can tell, let's see, is yours a mini? So who, who did? Who said they didn't know? I. Do. Okay. I have an old one. You have an old original one. Yeah. So you won't have Siri, but most everything else I'll show you will um, will apply to you. But the other thing is the original iPad doesn't run a lot of the new software, and there's going to be some exciting updates to the software come out in the fall. So. Uh, depending on how much you use it and stuff, Siri to me is a reason to upgrade to some of the newer stuff. I have the iPad mini and I love the mini because I don't want to be carrying a man purse around all the time and I can stick this thing in my pocket. The screen has exactly the same amount of information on it as a regular iPad, it's just reduced. So if your up close vision is good, these work out great. The full size iPad they're exactly the same. They, may, they are no difference between one another. So um, to start off, I really want to go to one thing that Apple doesn't include on here. And it, first of all, let's try to make sure you're connected to the network. And it's the, what, RMA office, I believe. And so I noticed you have an iPhone. That's fine mm -hmm. because I'll have a little, when I go into here, I've got a little different site for you to go to. But what I want everybody to do is go to Safari on your iPad or on your iPhone. And up at the top, yeah, it's RMA, RMA Center, I think, and it should be no password. Everybody connected? Everybody not connected? Do you know how to go into your connections? Just connect to the Wi-Fi here? Unable to join the network. RMA Center and Wi-Fi? Yeah, so here, let's go back to settings. I'll start you off here. We'll go to settings, and over on the left, tap Wi-Fi, and you'll get a list of these. Look for RMA Office. It'll be in the lower section here, RMA Office, and tap it again. We may be saturating it at this point. We good? Everybody good? Come on in and have a seat. There's chairs here if you'd like. There's a chair here. Okay, so now what we want to do, anyone not connected? Let me know. You're not connected? Anybody else? No, there should be no password. You're on the road, but it gets passed. Oh, that's your iPhone store. You're good. Just hit the home button. Once you're connected on the Wi Fi, you know it's up at the top. There's a little Wi Fi logo. That's just hit the home button. Just, just tap it. It's gone up there. Okay. Once you're done with that, you are. Just hit the home button, the big round button on the face. The big round button on the face will get you to the home screen. Okay? And then you can always tell if you're on Wi-Fi right up here at the top. Now the cool thing is, once you've connected here, and you go away to your house, you'll still connect to your Wi-Fi at your house, but when you come back here, now that you've joined it one time, it will automatically join. 
<laughs> you have a one little Wi Fi logo on here? So the Wi that's a little that's a little project you can do is learn how to connect to these Wi-Fi. Every McDonald's has a Wi-Fi, most hotels, Starbucks, etc. You want to be able to use these devices when you're out and about. If you're on an iPhone, you don't have to, because you have data on your on your iPhone, but if you use the data from the Wi-Fi, you're not using your cellular data. So you're not going to be going against your cellular data. Did you have a question? Yeah, how can you tell at the top of this that I it's right next to the AT&T. Oh. The little logo right up here. It looks like, I always say it looks like a piece of a pie or a baseball diamond. Okay, that's Wi Fi. I have all right, so those that aren't connected, we'll check it later. I can't get it. Um, yeah. No, no, don't turn it off. No, no, you're fine. You're, you're good. You're, you're on your regular show. You will see you'll be fine. Okay. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to go to Safari. It may be a little slow for all of you when we do it. So I'm going to do it first, and then you guys can do it afterwards. But I'm going to tap on Safari. Everybody can do that. Then up at the top up here is the address bar. So what I want to do is I'm going to tap right at the address bar. And I get a keyboard. OK? Just follow, follow it, tap on the top in the middle, and your keyboard will come up. If you have writing in there, if you have writing, hit the little X right here on the right-hand side so it's completely cleared out, but your keyboard's still up. Okay? Everybody got their keyboard up? Yeah, how many people next to you can't be you're good. You're reading me. You're reading me. You're reading me. You're reading me. You're You're reading me. You're reading me. you You're reading me. You're reading me. You're reading me. You're reading all right, cool. So normally this is how you'd go to a web page and you'd type in, you know, uh, find the best apple pie recipe in the world or something like that. What I'm going to do here though, and we've got to do it slowly and carefully is, I'm going to type help, H-E-L-P, then, and it, you cannot, you don't worry about capitalization or anything, it's all lowercase, help dot, the period, apple dot com, okay, help.apple.com. Don't hit enter or anything yet. I want to make sure you have that entered first. Now, those of you with an iPhone, I'm going to tell you a little bit different, and those with an iPad. So with the iPhones, hold on a second. Is everybody got help.apple.com? Anybody that doesn't, please. Dot com. Help.apple.com. Then we're going to go, and we have to put a slash up there. So how I get my slash is right here where the one, two, three is. T 
tap that, and tap this slash right there. One slash or two? One. Okay. Help.apple.com help slash. Got that? Okay. Now, hit the ABC button again. Now, iPhone people, hold on a second. iPad people, I want it to read help.apple.com slash and just type iPad. iPhone people, guess what you get to type? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. If she, she has a list already. If there's already a list in a pull down like this right here, it's always, if it does say exactly what you want it to, it's always best to tap that because it creates and makes so you don't have any typos. So on your iPhone, you want to get the one that says iPhone going. Yes, ma'am. Back there? Come up, it's not supposed to come up. Okay. I came up here. Mine just says phone slash time, not iPhone. Yeah. Uh, Put it in the pH. Yeah, no, that, that's actually it. Yeah. So you can tap on the phone. Okay. You went to apple.com. We'll just redo it just like that. Just say It's very important that it's typed correctly. Okay, both these guys are fine. Where's your phone? Uh, you're going to be here too. So it's either going to say iPad or iPhone user guide depending on what device you're on. Okay? If it says guide app. Guide is fine because that's really what we're looking for. Okay, now. Everybody has it where it says help.apple.com slash iPad, or it'll say iPad user guide, or in your guys' case, iPhone user guide. I want you to tap on that if you have a pull down, or just hit go or return, and everybody should get the page I'm getting right now. Well, the page I'm slowly getting. There we go. What's that? Oh, on iPhone, it's just going to be different. In fact, I'll try to bring my iPhone one up here in a second. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Okay. You know, we're taking a lot of time on this because this is the best part of the whole class you'll get. This, it, No, seriously, this is the best thing going. I don't know why Apple didn't include it. Okay, I have my iPhone up here now, too. Does everybody on an iPad have a screen? You've got to turn it sideways and have it look like this. It goes. Oh, no, 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 stop. You just have dot com. You need to do a slash. So here's, here's an older version of the operating system. So 
Yes, that's great. So just I think it's all that we Okay, some of you on iPads may have a little different look than this, okay? You may have a different look than this. That means you're using the previous operating system. You know, I wish this person would stop calling me. Jeez, you know, when somebody doesn't answer their, their phone the first four or five times. All right, so if you're on an iPad, it'll look slightly different. She has the older version of the iPad operating system and it looks a little bit different, but it's the same thing. Now the cool thing about that is, that means that person is running iOS 6, which is the previous operating system. Those of you that haven't looked like this, you're running iOS 7. And in the fall, when iOS 8 comes out, it will automatically detect which operating system you're using. So with all the new features that are rolled out into iOS 8, it'll come up and show you here. But before we move anywhere off of this page, we want to do two critical things. I want to go up to the little share arrow on the iPads first. On the iPhone, it's right down here. You may have a, you may have a box with a curvy arrow if you have the old operating system. Okay, so tap on that one time. You're already there. Okay, now I gotta tell you one thing, I see a lot of people doing this. The iPad is designed to be horizontal. The iPhone is designed to be vertical. Okay? For ease of use. You can change them all you want, but that's the way they're designed. Huh? You can do, leave it like it is right now and then we can go back and look at it. That's no problem. Does everybody have the share of Go to the phone also because you'll see the same thing. So in the share box, I'm gonna I see a little thing there that says add to home screen. Okay, I want to tap that one time. Yes, add to home screen. You don't have one. Yes, you do. I don't care. I'm already on the password. Add to share button. Add to share button. Add to home screen right in the center. That's it. Yours is already set. You're already set. 
So now you'll notice it's on your home screen. Mine looks a little different. Well, actually, my, I, my iPhone one looks like this. My iPad one looks like this. It'll probably look like a question mark. Now, it looks like an app on here, but that really is it's a Safari browser. So everybody go click on your little iPhone or iPad guide, and let's bring them up. OK? It takes a second because, again, it's using the internet and it's checking with Apple and saying, hey, I see you're using this operating system. So on the iPad, now this is a great example of if I have my iPad horizontal, it looks like this with a table of contents on the left. But if I turn my iPad like this, it goes away. So iPad this way, iPad this way. So if you have your iPad this way, just like the iPhone, if you tap these up at the top, it brings you the table of contents. But I'm just going to go into one of these and show you because we were all wondering where the home button was or how to use Siri. Now, it doesn't detect whether you have Siri or not. It assumes you have Siri if you're running the operating system. So don't, you know, don't worry about that. But let's hit, we're going to tap iPad at a glance or we'll tap iPhone at a glance, and let's just tap the iPad overview and iPad overview, or iPhone overview. And this is an interactive guide. It just gives you where all the buttons are and everything else. I don't have that at all. You guys have on iOS 6, you have stuff on the left. Just to the internet. Just show you where all the buttons are. So that was just an overview. There's everything else. After you guys use this, you won't ever need me. <laughs> this is my, this is your get out of jail free card. I'm not going to go into this. just explains it. It doesn't change the settings. This is not, her question is, this just explains it. It doesn't change settings. Yeah, this is essentially just an onboard guide is all it is. But the, again, the cool part is as you update to the newer operating systems, oh. it will update that. It'll, it'll tell you the new one. I don't, if you don't want to be updated on the phone, what do you do? Why not? Well, you do? it will read whatever operating system you're using. Okay. You're there. I'm having trouble doing this one. Hit those little lines. I'm sorry, what was that? Nobody's going to force you to update. I won't hold a gun to your head. No. Okay. 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 No. No, but but this will sense whichever operating system you're running and give you the appropriate information. Okay. 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 Okay
okay? Because that's why some of you have some that look a little different than the other. And by the way, the new operating system, it works great. It was initially, there were some issues with just people seeing things. They didn't like new stuff, but it works fantastic, so. You know, but I'm, I'm, I don't, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. That's my philosophy. All right. That was like pulling teeth. I apologize. <laughs> But you know, that I, I just can't stress enough how useful that is. And what we do, we did two things. We made sure we could connect to a Wi-Fi internet. We saw how to enter an address in Safari. We saw how to save it to our home screen. Now we did this. Let's say you have a, I mean most of the things you do, you can make an app for it. Or you can make a bookmark in Safari. But if you have like sacb.com or if there's a local website you go to a lot, you can essentially add it to your home screen like that, and at one touch, you're going right to it because by touching it, it fires up Safari. I'm not saying clutter your screen with it. There's still times to do bookmarks and everything else, but for certain websites, or if you're three levels down into a website and you always want to go to that particular spot on the website, you can save it to your home screen. Believe it or not, when the iPhone was introduced seven years ago, the web apps were the only thing you could do. It was applications on the web, and there were all these names and everything. It was only six years ago, last week, that the app store started. We're going to talk a little bit about apps. There was a question back here. Okay, go ahead. Can you show us how to put RatchetMarietta.com on the Let's Let's do it quick, because it's the same process. So just hit your home button, the big round button on the face of the device. Go to Safari. And it's what? RanchoMarietta.com? What was it? I'm sorry? No, that's because you had that's because you're on that. Hit the home button. Hit the home button. And oh, okay, so now you need to go, everybody. Let's, let's go back, we'll go to Safari, and then up at the top it says, what's Siri? I'm gonna tap on the bar up there, and I'm gonna hit the X to clear it out, right? Are you in Safari? Yeah, I get Safari. Right, we have to get rid of that screen. So you have to get the X. There it is. Now hit the X. On the right hand side. Tell the URL. There's an X. On bar. What? Okay. I don't have an X. You have to tap on the bar up at the top. All right. So we don't want to. I'm sorry. Okay. So Rancho They're coming to get you. RanchoMarietta.com, correct? All right, and then I hit go. So that's it, right? Okay, now, all we do to save this to our home screen if we want to is hit the share arrow. Again, those on the older operating system, it's a square box with a curved arrow coming out of it. That's the share button. And, and then add to home screen. 
Or you can put market, but somebody, they asked about doing it. You can do whatever you want with it. Hey, if you want to email this to somebody, you click on mail and it brings up an email and you send it to somebody. Okay? All right, we've belabored the home screen enough. Let's move on. Seven point one point two. All right, you guys. Hello. You guys can do that later. It'll work, I promise. What was the old Cheech and Chong class? Okay. All right. So we saw people take photos with their iPad earlier. And most of you iPad owners also have an iPhone. Generally speaking, your iPhone is a better camera than the iPad because you actually even the phone is, is got a and it's got flash on it. But the flash only works for about five feet, so don't count on the flash, and you might want to turn flash off. And I'll show you some tricks on the camera in a minute. But does anyone know what the best camera in the world is? Nobody knows what the best camera in the world is? The one you have with you. So, I go out, actually I'll show you here in a second. So, I have a, I have a couple Canon cameras and I go out and take some sh photos. In fact, one of my favorite spots to shoot is not too far from our lovely landfill over here. So... This, well, this was right by Slough House. It wasn't my iPhone. But when I'm shooting, this is the road that floods in last winter. The road that floods along there, Kiefer Boulevard. So, uh, but there's many times when I don't have my main camera with me. If you look here, this is my big Canon camera. This is my iPhone of the same setting. Oh, wow, wow. It's a special app I have on the phone that I bought for $1.99. <laughs> on your iPhone? Yeah. That's and it'll work on the iPad. We'll go through that in a second. But I wanted to stress here that Apple spends a lot of money putting a good camera in these devices. Now, taking a picture with an iPad is not as easy or as convenient as taking it with an iPhone. Now they make some devices uh, that have holders for an iPhone, even on a tripod. You just slide the iPhone right into this. They're about 20 bucks. It mounts on a regular tripod. That's how I took this picture right here. I actually, when I'm out shooting with my big Canon, I attach what's called a gorilla pod, which is like this, to the side of it, and my iPhone's right next to it on the same tripod, and I take pictures with both. So uh, it's a really good camera. Now I'm gonna show you a couple tricks with the camera that will help. And uh, let me get the iPhone back up. Gotta make sure we're up here. I'm using the iPhone one because it's a little bit better camera and it's probably easier to see up here if I can get it reconnected. All right. So. If you're on your lock screen, your home screen, how many times is it something's going by and you don't have time to get your camera out to turn your camera phone and unlock it and do everything else? Well, watch. If I just press my button to power up my phone and tap the camera in the lower right, slide it up, and I now have a camera. Let's look at that again. So put your the button the button at the top on your iPad. I don't think I'm not sure if the iPad does it. Hang on. Yeah, the iPad does it. So, you'll notice there's a little camera icon here and here. If I slide it up, if I slide it up, I get my camera. Now, now if you have the older operating system, that you won't have that. Okay? Anybody on iOS 7 or newer will have that. On the iPad, 
Hang on. Oh, here. This right here, the little icon of a camera, I just slide it up. You probably don't have it if you have the older operating system. All right. Go. No. Okay, everybody, hold on. Let's do this together is the only way we're going to get through this. You want to use at the top of the iPhone and on the side of the iPad, there's the sleep-wake button which turns it off, makes it dark, okay? Everybody get yours dark, unless you're on iOS 6. If you don't have a lock, none of this is applicable, right? Everyone, everyone has a sleep-wake button. Everyone's afraid to have sleep. No, that's all right. Yeah. Well, if everybody has a sleep-wake button. Sleep -wake button. Sleep -wake button. Sleep -wake everybody has a sleep-wake button. It doesn't matter whether you have it locked or not. Okay, so we got a dark screen. I'll show you the iPad first. The sleep-wake button at the very, on yours, it's right on the left-hand top corner. Tap it. Did it go dark? Okay. Everybody dark? Yeah. All right. So now, either press the top button or the home button in front and make your screen light up. And when you do, and when you do, come on. Come on, computer. Now you get the camera icon. Now, the reason if you think about that is, you're out and about, and all of a sudden you see this chipmunk doing this great thing and you want to pull your, co your phone out and do it. You don't want to unlock your phone, put your password in and do all that. You swipe up and you've got your camera instantly. The other, you, you grab the little icon and slide it up. Just find the camera icon and slide it up. Okay? You guys, we need a lot less talking, please, or we won't get through this. I can wait. Okay, what, what's your question? I don't have it, so that means that... Because you have the older operating system. Okay. So, the camera, getting to the camera, the other beauty of that is is if your phone is locked and you have all this data you don't want somebody to see, if you hand them the phone by doing it this way with it locked, they can slide up and they can't get into any of the other spots. Your lock is, your, your password is still affected, so your phone, and they can't even see any of your old pictures. They can only see the pictures that were taken while it was that way. Okay, so it's just a, an easy way to hand the phone to somebody and say, take a picture of us, okay? So let me uh, turn my phone so it doesn't go off on us. All right, now, we can normally just go to the camera, also the camera icon, and if I tap the camera icon, those of you with cases have to remember that if your case is over your camera, <laughs> it's pretty useless. You don't think all your photos were taken late at night. So, like any camera, you have landscape. Think of it being built like me, wider than it is tall, okay? That's landscape. <laughs> and the way I wish I could be, which would be vertical or portrait mode, okay? Now, when you're taking pictures, generally it's landscape unless you're trying to get, it's a photo of a portrait or something where you're getting height. But I want to show you a couple tricks in the camera. Now, my screen may look a little different because if you have iOS 6, you won't have the HDR I'm going to talk about and some other things. So, but the most important thing is, how do I take a picture? And if you have the newer phones, don't hold that button there. It's going to take rapid fire. But you just take a picture by tapping that little button. So I just go here and I tap the button. Okay? Now... This is, and this is, the best digital camera ever because it's the one you have with you. And believe me, there are shots I've taken with my iPhone that are priceless, and yeah, they might have been better if I had my Canon with me, but I didn't. Because where I was, they might have gotten stolen, or I have to howl it around with me and everything else. 
but these devices have really good cameras. Occasionally, just take a piece of cloth and wipe the lens of the camera off just so it doesn't have that. Now, there's two cameras. There's a front-facing camera, too, for selfies, but it's not as good a quality camera as the rear-facing camera, okay? But it's a lot harder to get back here and try to take a picture of yourself. Okay, now, how many here have regular digital cameras, whether they're even little point-and-shoots? Okay, you all know you press the button down part way to kind of lock it in, right? Well, we can't kind of press that button part way. So what we do is, and I will show you a perfect example. We have a room over there where there's kind of bright lights. Look at the screen up here. And then here it's darker. Oh, if I get my finger off of it. Versus here. Now, if I zoom in here, notice how it's getting a little bit light. Oh, it's delayed. There we go. It lightens up. So, I can press the button part way by doing this. If I want to focus in on that bright light, I tap the screen where I want it to focus. You notice it darkened everything else? Or I tap the screen down here on the carpet, and it brightens it up. You guys try that, light and dark. So that's not only, it's focus and exposure is what it's saying. And it holds it right there for you, and then you can take the picture. But the best part is, you can lock it in. I'll show you a second. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is show you how to lock it. Don't do it yet, but I'll show you. And I'll give you an example. We have a perfect example here. If I, if I lock in... So if I lock in by pressing and holding, look at the screen. Watch, watch the screen up here. Watch the little, the little square. Everybody look up at the screen, please. Everybody look up at the screen. When I tap and hold down here, if I tap and hold, boom, boom. Now it's locked, and you notice at the top it says A-E-A-F lock. And now if I go here, see how washed out that, that is? So let's go up here and lock it in on that. But then look how dark it makes everything else. So I'm locking it on where it is, and it only lasts for that one shot, and if I want to release it, I just tap the screen anywhere. So, go where you're gonna do it, press and hold in one spot, and you'll see it go boom, 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 and that means it's locked. The situation would be, a, this is a perfect situation. If I want to get a picture of you guys here, but it's really bright out there, I can lock it in here, and get better lighting, whereas if I go out here, look at that, look at that, I got a lock like that, how good a picture is that of you guys? So you've got bright light behind the person you're trying to photograph. Exact same thing applies on the iPhone. Okay, so has anybody here shot videos with their iPhone or their iPad? Okay, by mistake. No, no, that's, I'm uh, glad she said that. She said by mistake. So what happens is every time somebody shoots video, the next time they go take a regular photo, if it's on video, it's like they got this long video and it's not as good. So every time you use video, turn it back to regular camera. Okay? Now, to do it on here, I just go over here to the right-hand side and I slide down to video. And you'll notice the camera button changes a different color. Okay? Same thing on your iPhone. Yes. On iPhone, you slide across. Okay? Now, the problem with that is, I want you all to remember this. When you take video, think of me. I'm wider than I am tall. You always want your video to be horizontal. Look at the screen we're displaying the video on. It's wider than it is tall. The computer is wider than it is tall. And a TV is, guess what? Right. So when you do video, even if it's on the iPhone, you want to do it horizontal. Okay? The only exception to that is if you have a really tall scene. But the problem is, you don't, you even don't want to do it then. You'll move the camera because when you play it back, it's always going to be, and what happens is you'll have these big black bars on both sides, and your video will be terrible because you have this little strip down the middle. Always go horizontal with your video, okay? Now, let's do a quick little video here. 
We're doing a quick video and it's amazing. It is actually high definition video. So believe it or not, there's no reason to buy a video camera anymore. In fact, and this is poor lighting. Oh, it won't show the, oh, we'll go through here. It's the delay, so we're gonna skip that. I'm sorry? So, yeah, you tap the red button to start it and the counter will start. And then when you're done, you tap the red button again. Okay? I'm sorry? Oh, this, are you? Are you on six or seven? Seven. Okay. You'll notice the slider there. Just slide that panel. Oh, yeah, change. Yeah, we'll go the other way. One more. Perfect. Okay. While we're in photos, the last one most of you have is called Pano. Anybody know what that is? She said right, panoramic. Now, this is an interesting thing. I've been preaching landscape mode. In panorama, you, your picture is already going to be real wide because it's multiple pictures. So you really want to capture more of the panorama. Oh, you know what? The iPhone or the iPad doesn't have pano. Excuse me. iPhone. We're going to go pano in the iPhone. So, so pano is a panoramic. I'm going to tell everybody about an app they can do get for their iPad that can do it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to hit the pano button, and then I'm moving slowly. Is it showing on the screen? Yeah. Yes. So see the arrow? I'm not hitting anything. It's automatically tracking. And now what's amazing is, let's look at that panorama. And the amazing thing is, is when you do panoramas, we went, we're, it's a tough light situation here. I go from dark to light, and you don't see any scenes. Apple does a remarkable job of stitching that together. And you can go 270 degrees. Let's go back over that. It has to be your iPhone. Yes. It has to be your iPhone. And on the bottom, you have photo, oops, pano. You're on the old operating system. Good reason you should update. You, you, no, she can do it. And I'm going to tell you about an app in a second that'll do it. Because those of you on an iPhone or an iPad will also do it. But a panorama, again, is stitches the photos together. You only do it the first time. You tap it the first time, keep the arrow level, and you keep going across. And when you're done, you tap it to end it. Okay, now, do not, in a small room like this, stick your arms out and do it like this. Because we're pivoting around the camera. So you pivot around the camera because otherwise the angle of incidence changes all the time. In a large landscape, it doesn't make a difference. Now, I have an app I love called Pano 360, or 360 Pano. I think it's $1.99. It works on iOS 6. It even worked on iOS 5. And the reason I like this app is, when I was in Arches National Park, I was up on a plateau, and I wanted to do a 360, but the sun was so bright I couldn't see my screen it will click every time I can move to the next shot. Where the Apple one is seamless, plus this will do a, free, a full 360 degree panorama. And again, I want it, everything vertical in this case. So I'm gonna do a pano here. It's in the App Store and it's called 360 Panorama. It's not how much? 99 cents. 99. It's even a better deal than I thought. Now the cool thing is, here is the panorama. Uh, it doesn't, it's not, it's really tough to do. But I can save it. I can save it to my camera. Oh, there it went. I can save it to my camera roll, or I can upload it to Occipital's site. So if I hit upload, I can say start upload, and we'll show you in a second. 
but it also will save it to the camera roll. The reason it's cool is you get free space up at occipital where it'll store it, and when people view it on a, on a computer or on an iPad, it does a complete panorama. So I'll show you in a sec here. On pano, you first you're first you're holding it like me. No, nope. panoramas are always vertical, because again, from the panoramas, you got to remember what it's doing is it's going to be wide to begin with. So give it all the height you can, or you're going to have this thin little ribbon. Are you in pano? You need to slide this over. Oh, I see. Slide over now. Now when you start it, you'll get the arrow. Okay. All right, so hang on. Let's open this. And let's look. So this is Occipital is who makes that. 99 cents, I'll tell you, that's a bargain. And panoramas add a lot to it. We'll open a couple of the panoramas I have here that are pretty amazing. I'm sorry? Did you download it? Okay, we'll show you in a sec. And look, it even says at Rancho Marietta. So here is the panorama. And I can use the gyro. So there, look on the screen here on my iPhone. There's our panorama. And it'll even do it 360 degrees. No, once you start a panorama, you just move the camera slowly and evenly and then hit the button to stop. Now, the only problem with panoramas, I've done them at crab feeds and all these other things, especially in a small area like this. If someone moves, they're going to have a ghosted image because it's a couple. It's really taking multiple shots. But the beauty of it is, is how it stitches all this together. Okay, so we've learned what the best camera in the world is, right? Now, the stuff this can do is amazing compared to what regular cameras do. Um, and again, you saw those. Uh, the other app I want to talk about, and we'll talk about how to go into apps in a minute, the ones on again, something like that was done with the iPhone with an app called Pro HDR, which is what stands for High Dynamic Resolution. And this was actually, this was taken uh, near the corner of Grant Line and Douglas. I live over in Stone Creek, over kind of by Mather in there. And so I take a lot of sunrise and sunset shots out there. Yeah, and I'll show how to go into an app store in a second. Go ahead. Yeah, so she asked what the square option is. I'd rather have rounded. No. <laughs> um, square is like for posting on Facebook and stuff. So most photos are are kind of a little bit wide screen, but that's a little bit squarer. And that's actually if you're going to post it on Facebook, it works for that. But frankly, my feeling is, don't restrict your photo. Take the full size photo. You can crop it later. Okay. And you can go into any of your photos and crop them. You've got all the stuff you can do right inside the Photos app, and I really encourage you to explore the Photos app, and it's part of in that, in that iPad and iPhone guide, you have photo information. If you have the original iPad, it doesn't have a camera. That's the only one that doesn't. Yes, ma'am? Uh, on the Mini, in that you have an HDR already, yeah. where it is on or off? Yeah. Um, it is on or off? I keep mine on an auto. Is there an auto? It just says on or off. I, you know, okay, so let's talk about HDR. HDR is kind of like a panorama, but what an HDR does, in fact, that's how I, this photo is done in HDR, and it's done with that Pro HDR app, and in fact, it's oversaturated. But do you remember how when we looked at the light here and then the ground here, one photo was too bright and one photo was too dark? HDR, high dynamic resolution, means it's taking two photos. One for the bright and one for the not so bright, not so lit, how's that? We don't want it for the not so bright. <laughs> one for here, and it combines them and gives you the best of both. 
And so HDR on is quite good. Not everybody has that ability to have it on theirs, but if they don't, they can get this other app. Now, the built-in HDR with Apple just makes the photo better. It doesn't oversaturate the colors like this app did here. Okay? In fact, let me show you an example. I think we took a picture here earlier. Great example here. Um, that is just a regular picture of you guys. And this is where I took it with the Pro HDR app. Notice the color difference. Now this is, I had HDR off on the Apple iPhone, so let's take the same one with Apple's HDR on. I think I had it off, let's check here. So on my iPhone, I'm gonna go back, and you can't do it on Pano, you have to be on Photo. HDR Auto, I'm gonna turn it on. And so now I'm going to take and do this photo with it, HDR. Okay, now let's compare our photos. So there's the one we just took. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that's the one we just took, and it actually takes two photos. It takes a non-HDR and an HDR, and you can't really tell much difference here. It's a slight difference, but what it does is it makes the photo more feature-rich. But let's compare that to this one. Actually, let's do this. There's the pano. Actually, let's get rid of this one. So again, let's look at this. Oh, come on, screen. There we go. Look how vibrant the colors are here. That was with the Pro HDR app, which oversaturates, makes them look fake. Okay? And then this was just with Apple's HDR. Okay? This gives you a truer, perfect photo, okay? The other one oversaturates, but sometimes you want that. The HDR? Yeah. Is, is it, whenever it's yellow. Oh, when it's yellow, it's on? Yeah, so now you can tap that HDR is on. Would so it's on. First, set, I'll show you on my screen. With HDR, you want the flash off. HDR will probably turn the flash off itself. And you usually want the flash off anyway. Let's go back to the camera. She had a good question. So up at the top, you see it says HDR on, which means yellow is, if I tap it, it's on, and then I get the choice of auto, HDR on, or off. You may not have, you may just have on and off depending on the model of your phone. The 5S has a very strong processor, so I just leave mine on auto. Now, because it takes two photos, you wouldn't want to take a car whizzing by because kind of like the panorama, the movement, it would be two different photos, okay? But just hand holding it is quite good. All right, um, I want to show you how to go into the App Store. If you have problems with your Apple ID password, sorry. Um, there's, it's password hell. Apple is working on fixing it. But they're slowly working on fixing it because Apple, when you're the biggest and the best, you have a target on your back. And so therefore, they want to make sure they can walk slowly and make sure everything works. But in the not too distant future, instead of passwords, you'll simply put your thumbprint or your fingerprint right on your device, which I do with mine now. I can unlock my phone with that, but soon I'll be able to use that for my password everywhere, including Wells Fargo and places like that. So that's coming. Um, the company they use, they, Apple bought this company, Authentech, and it was less than 18 months ago, and they've already implemented it in the phone last October. So it's the future. Believe me, that's the call I get the most, is can my passwords are messed up and all that. When I come back, we'll do a whole Apple ID class because it takes the Apple ID and password and everything else. But just so you know, there's, there's hope on the horizon for that. So, what's your question? This is off the subject, but I have to leave. How do I get on Siri? You're on Siri right now. <coughs> I don't want it to, and I want to get it. I can't get it. Well, you're not paying her enough. My, <laughs> my Siri is, does exactly what I want it to. <laughs> Let me finish this out. Let me show where the apps are, and then I'll go to Siri right away. Because Siri's really good, and that's actually where I was going to go. So. <laughs> We're already 15 minutes over, my gosh. It's all right. Okay. We okay? Yeah. All right. So 
the App Store. Now, there are a million two hundred thousand apps. So I guarantee you, whatever you want to do, there's an app there. There's a dash cam for your car. There's there's how to tie knots. There's I don't know. There's tons of things. But if you tip the App Store, and if I go up to the upper right hand corner. Well, actually, go to the App Store and hit Featured at the bottom, and there's lists of different things. There's editor's picks. There's all kinds of reviews. Many apps are free. Many are free that then ask you to pay later once you get hooked on it. Yeah. Or there's apps you just pay for like 99 cents for 360 Pano. Let's look up, let's look up 360 Pano. 360 Pano. There it is. So, oh, come on screen, there it is, 360 panorama, if I tap that. Now there's certain apps that might be iPhone only apps that I'll show you. So there it is, 360 panel. Mine says open, which means I already have it downloaded. What did you guys say, it was 99 cents? Yeah. yeah. That's killer for panoramas. Let's show you the Pro HDR if you want to get creative. And then Pro HDR. May only be iPhone. Pro HDR is going to come up in a sec. And then the last app I got to show you. Is anybody here a watercolor artist? Does anybody do watercolors? Huh? You know what? They have a club here. Let's sabotage the club. Because there's a wonderful app called Waterlog. So here's Pro HDR. Let's go look at this one. It's And I'll spell it Water. L O G U E. Okay, come on. Oh, maybe. There it is. Water log, all one word. I'm going to do Siri and then we're going to come back to water log because I love it. It takes I'm going to open up my water log, and I am the farthest thing from an artist there ever will be. Now, I'm going to take a photo. Let's, in fact, let's just take a photo right here of our class. I can use my photo library or my camera. So I'll just take my photo library, and I'll go back to my barbed wire and bubbles. There we go, this one. This app, this is my picture I took, and now it's turning it into a watercolor. I'm, my hands will never leave my wrists. And there's different types of watercolors I can turn it into. I have one client who just went, she, she was blown away. She just went and had some framed, and she loved it. She did it on uh, watercolor paper. She had it printed on watercolor paper. Okay, so that's waterlogged. All right, we're going to talk about my girlfriend, Siri. Now, I could show you how to make appointments. I could show you how to do emails. I could show you how to search the internet, but why should I? It's kind of like if I was sitting in an office and I had an assistant out in the outer office. Siri will do anything I want it to. I just want to make sure that, <coughs> hang on here, I need to, <laughs> so, I'm not sure what you said. Okay. All right. So, I'll tell you a sec. I've got to get it up on the screen for you here. Let me see if that still works. Good. Okay. Siri is your digital assistant. But if you had somebody out in the outer room, you wouldn't just say lunch. You'd say, please schedule a lunch. Or you wouldn't just say email. You'd say, please send so-and-so an email. So 
the way you get Siri, don't everybody do it because everybody will do everybody else. Watch me first. Don't try this at home. Make sure we're on. Good. All right, I'm going to press and hold the home button. And I will wait for her to come up. When she beeps at me, I can say what I want to do. What's the current temperature? It's about 91 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Hot. <laughs> will you marry me? That's sweet. Is there anything else I can help you with? <laughs> yes, what's the current temperature in Monterey? It's 63 degrees Fahrenheit right now in Monterey. Convert 63 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. Checking on that. Oh, she sure does. So 17 to, she didn't speak it. So what I want to do is, we all know, so I'm just going to go quickly into where we would get email on our phone. So if I tap the email, and I tap new message, down in the body, right here, you'll notice there's a microphone. That microphone is not Siri, but it's speech to text dictation. And I'll show you how this works. If I tap the microphone, comma, I can start talking, comma, and it will, quote, type, closed quote, for me, period. Siri is great, comma, but this isn't Siri, comma. This is, quote, speech to text dictation, close quote, period. New paragraph. What do you think? Question mark. So, don't we hate typing on the little keyboard on both of our nerd devices and everything? So I hit the microphone, I waited for it to beep, and then I spoke. I spoke my punctuation. It will not always help out. I mean, it doesn't know the difference between two, two, or two, but it will sometimes contextualize it. And you'll notice what I say on the bottom of all my iPhone emails is, sorry if the message is curt, has typos, or weird insertions from Siri. So now I can say anything I want. I have complete absolution, right? <laughs> oh, I was blaming on Siri. So these are fairly quick. You can, it'll re, how it works is, it records my voice, I have to have internet, it records my voice for up to 30 seconds at a time, sends it to Maiden, North Carolina, at Apple supercomputer, and it jumbles it all up and takes that recording and looks at the dictionary and spits it back to you as text. And if I want to keep going where I left off because there's a 30 second limit, I just hit the microphone, comma, and keep speaking where I left off, period. When I'm done, comma, I just hit the done button, period. If you don't have a Siri, you won't have a microphone. You have to go to the mail. Any, anywhere you have a keyboard, you'll have a microphone. You have to be composing a mail. You have to have a keyboard up. You have to be somewhere where you would type. Back there first. How do you get that message That's a signature. That's just Google it. So so let's 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 show you how to do that because Ken won't be here all the time. I'm gonna go to Safari. No, no, don't don't take any notes. Don't take any notes here. I'm gonna go to Safari and I'm gonna go up to the bar at the top. How do I add a signature to my iPhone email? So that's my search in Safari, and I just hit go. Instead of typing it, I said it. And now we're going to get a bunch of lists down here, how to set in your iPhone signature. Google's your friend. Use it. I, can, I don't think Siri can add. Siri, okay, I can say, I can say Search the web for how do I make a signature in Apple Mail on the iPhone. Let me think about that. What My website to turn this off. I don't know what's happening there. There we. Wow. 
jumbling. So, um, just search it, just Google it, okay? So now, again, you guys weren't all flawed, flo you, you weren't put back by this. It records my voice, it sends it over the internet, and then it comes back as text. When you think about that, that's huge, and how quick it is. But what Siri is, it adds one more component to that. So I'm gonna go back to my mail message, and I'm gonna put in two things. If it has Siri, you can. Anywhere you have a key, anywhere you have a keyboard, if you have Siri, Siri, it, it, and it's not that Apple didn't want to leave the iPad 2 out. What it was is it doesn't have enough processing power. So there was an app called Siri, and you can get some dictation apps. So um, I'm going to say, I'm drunk. New paragraph. Will I need a jacket today? Question mark. So it came back with, I'm drunk, and will I need a jacket today? It literally types what I speak. So now, watch this. I'm going to go back to Siri, and I'm going to press and hold the home button and say, I'm drunk. Don't expect me to get you home. <laughs> and it says, call me a taxi. That is taxi-based services close to where you are, and I'm sure in the very near future it's not going to be taxi-based services located nearby. It's going to be real taxis located nearby. Will I need a jacket today? This clothing store looks pretty oh, close to you. Will I need a jacket today? The low temperature will be 66 degrees Fahrenheit today. So, you asked about directions, but I'm going to show you one other thing in a second here. Find the nearest sushi restaurant. Looking for sushi restaurants. I found 15 sushi restaurants a little ways from you. I sorted them by distance. She sorted them by distance. But I really don't want them by distance, so I'll say, find the best sushi restaurant nearby. <coughs> Looking for best rated sushi restaurants. I found 15 sushi restaurants a little ways from you. I've sorted them by rating. It's Yelp rating. Yelp is a crowdsource, crowd based, crowdsource based thing and she sorts them by rating. So the last thing with Siri you asked about directions is Give me directions to Sacramento International Airport. Giving directions to Sacramento International Airport. It's going to start speaking through my computer probably because of the way it's connected. But you can, oh, it's not coming up. Sacramento International Airport. Yeah. So it's speaking it, and it's not on the screen. I don't know why. Okay, I'll do it on the iPad. For some reason, the phone has dropped off from the. We're we're really doing a tough thing on the internet here, putting this through this. So, give me directions to Sacramento International Airport. Sacramento International Airport. Okay, so it did it now. So it'll give me voice guided turn by turn directions. If it's your iPad, though, the problem is. Starting no route to Sacramento International Airport. So Head east on Marietta Parkway, then make a U turn. Out, you have to have a cellular type. I mean, if you have an iPhone, it's always connected. And it'll update your route if you decide to take a. You know, if you decide to go out Jackson Highway, go closer and go Watt instead of Sunrise or whatever, it'll correct for you. But I can also say, find In-N-Out Burger on my route. I found eight restaurants along your route, made In-N-Out Burger a little ways from you. So that's on my route. How much further to my destination? Oh. Will you always have voice? How long till I arrive?
So she spoke that. It's again, it's kind of going between the two here. Yeah, and I can I can make phone calls like. So let me end the thing here, and then I'll get with your question back there. My husband uses it to call phone numbers contact list. Well, if it's in your contact list, you can just say call so and so, and they're on your contact list. Or I can say call nine one six two one three four five nine six. Which is me, so I'll stop that. <laughs> so, does the directions always come in conjunction with voice? If you use Apple Maps and you have Siri direct you, the voices will the voices in your head will always show up there. <laughs> and Apple has done it. So, if you use all your iPhones, came with great headsets, believe it or not, and they have a little microphone in the middle along with a volume up, volume down button. So you, if you're wearing your iPhone headset, which I keep mine with me all the time, so if I'm at Home Depot or Costco, I constantly can be listening to podcasts or iHeartRadio, like KFBK, things like that. But the right-hand earbud has a thing in it, and it's volume up, volume down. Press and hold in the center, and that activates Siri. And tip of the day is, if you put your iPhone or your iPad on a tripod, and I use the volume up button in camera mode, it will click the shutter for you. So you don't jiggle your camera. But the thing is, is that Siri is really, really good. And the best thing on Siri is you can say, oops, I'll do it here. Let me end that since the iPhone's not up there. What can I say? You can say things like, so this is the list of things and how you say them. Think about what you want to do and kind of the verb of it. You've been waiting your question? I have a friend who's watching you have an iPad, um, well, some kind of um, universal Wi-Fi or something like that. If I understood correctly. So what it is is, so iPhones are always connected to the internet because they, when you're here, you can use the Wi-Fi. When you're home, you can use the Wi-Fi. But the rest of the time, it uses the cellular tower signals and you usually pay for data on that, and you sometimes pay handsomely for that. Um, but on the iPad, they make all iPads into models. They make a Wi-Fi only version that works only when there's Wi-Fi at McDonald's, at your home, etc. And then for $130 more, it doesn't matter what model it is, it's always the exact model, $130 more, it comes with a cellular connection in it. Now, on your iPhones, a lot of times we have a contract, a two-year contract, et cetera, on your iPhones. iPads don't have a contract. You're paying that $130 extra to have that hardware, and then you go to one of the carriers and you buy a plan. Can you get that into the back? No, it has to have it built in, and the only way you can tell if it's built in is if you take your case off where the microphone is, there's a plastic insert right across in here. And that's since the very first iPad. And the tip of the day is if you do have an iPad that's both cellular and Wi-Fi, you can go to T-Mobile, you pay $10 for a little card, and you might get a for free, and you'll get 200 megabytes a month for free for life. Or I have a plan with them where I got a new iPad through T-Mobile. They gave me the cellular version for the same price as the Wi-Fi. They I, want, I like to pay outright for stuff, but they said, well, you got to do it on our plan. So I get till the end of this year, at least, for uh, a gigabyte a month for free. So I get 1,200 megabytes a month for free, but then it'll be 10 bucks a month after that. And I'm just paying monthly 27 bucks or something for the iPad monthly for two years. And when I do want to just not use their contract, the, when I don't want their service anymore, I just pay off what's remaining on the iPad. There's no interest or anything else. T-Mobile is really making a move. And iPhone pads out. A lot of you are iPhone owners. There's new iPhones coming out in the fall, September, October. We think September 25th, something like that. Uh, there'll be a little bit bigger iPhone and maybe even a lot bigger iPhone or what they call a phablet. And the trend is away from the two-year contracts to pay for the device itself up front. And then just, you know, it's, you actually save money if you pay for the phone up front and then you can get a better, a better service price. Because they're subsidizing the price of the phone. You all know what you paid for your iPads. They're not subsidized by the carriers. 
your iPhone is subsidized by the carriers. The iPhone you bought for $199 with a two-year contract cost the carrier $650. And if you were to buy it outright, it would be $650. That's why it's got a better camera and everything else. And uh, that's why you probably paid close to $50 in tax also because you're paying tax on the unsubsidized price unless you buy it at Costco, which now carries Costco just got in iPads and iPhones after a long drought because there was some disagreements between the two companies. <laughs> um, but they just, in fact, the, the store over here on Sunrise is just setting up their iPad display right now and the wireless carrier has it. And they have some good prices. So. Um, it's the most current, yeah, and then they'll have them when the new one comes out in the fall. So right now, uh, let me pull, oh, you have a 5S. Does anybody have a 4 here? Yes. Yeah. So this is how I get more phones. You know? Anyone want to buy a phone? So the original iPhone was a 3.7 inch screen measured diagonally. The new phone... The, the five is a four inch measured diagonal. Um, the, the two that are coming out is supposed to be ones of 4.7 inch diagonally, and then they're talking about a 5.5 inch diagonally. And those start to be what they call phablets, phone tablets. Um, I don't know which one I'm going to go to, but I'll go to the 4.7 or the 5.5. Five. And, and again, it's still rumors with Apple, you never know. I don't have any inside track, but the indications are there's been a few parts leaking and stuff. And it may, they may even have a sapphire crystal glass, which will make it virtually impervious to damage and to breakage. Okay, so if we think back about the iPhone history, you have an, the iPhone 3, then the 3G, or 3G, and then the 3GS, then the 4, then the 4S, then the 5, then the 5S, so we would be getting a 6, and we'll probably get two sizes. So that'll be a new, a new structure. The iPads, we went with the iPad 2, was the newer design, and the iPad 2 and the 3 and the 4, because the 3 only lasted for a little while, the, three and the 2 and the 4 were the same. Then we came out with an iPad Air full size, which was a whole different design. That was last October. So the iPad Air will probably just have a little bit of an update. The iPad Mini is in its second generation. We had the original Mini and then the Retina Mini, so we think the iPad Mini will have a form factor update this fall also. They usually keep things for two years. And it's not because, believe me, Apple makes plenty of these. They could update them every year if they wanted to. But it's all the case manufacturers and all the other things out there and, and all your infrastructure and stuff. So they're, they're, they pretty much keep a model around for two years. The other thing is, is it takes them time to roll it out in other countries. So it used to be, well, recently when the iPhone 5S came out, they rolled it out in almost every country right away. But they do still have to it's take six months to get them out to other countries. Go ahead. Can you speak to the value of iCloud? It's free. <laughs> Good for me. I see it on my If it's working, you don't know it. <laughs> All right. No, it's good. Good point. So, and iCloud is going to become. A better value, in the, yes, it's free now, but you can pay for extra space. They're going to have, in the fall, they're going to do a lot more things with it, so you can store files and do other things. But what the iCloud is, and people get intimidated when they hear the cloud, okay? It's the big top, the cloud this, the cloud that. Well, clouds come and go and clouds disappear, right? Well, that's kind of what happens. But it, don't be intimidated by the cloud, because anybody here that doesn't get email, and you've been getting email for a long time, that's essentially cloud computing. It's a computer somewhere that if somebody sends you an email, Gmail let's say, it goes to the Gmail server and it sits there and then you go and get the messages off of it. That's essentially what a cloud does. On our iOS devices and on our Macs, the cloud is this place that is a special spot in that big supercomputer in North Carolina that Apple has sequestered away just for you and your information. And believe me, no one no one protects your privacy more than Apple. Apple is taking a strong stance against it. In fact, Apple's privacy, that's who we're having as a speaker next Tuesday at the, at the Mac Nexus meeting. I've got a gentleman that's a, uh, an expert in the field coming in and going to give us a Skype presentation on it. And he wrote a great article about how well Apple protects your privacy. 
more than the other companies because Apple's not selling your stuff to try to get money from advertisers. Apple makes enough money off of you buying their products and they say, uh-uh, we're going to keep it clean. But your privacy is protected and what happens is if I update your contacts on my iPhone, it goes up to the cloud and comes down to my iPad and comes down to my Mac. These don't sync one-to-one. -one. They sync via an intermediary, basically a message keeper that takes it in and then puts it back out. And that's what the cloud does for your contacts, your notes, etc. And if you use pages and numbers and keynote in there that are free, the document, uh, uh, for making documents, it will sync that also. But iCloud is part of what's built in. It's free. It's to make it if you have multiple devices so you can sync all your devices. And that's part of your Apple ID password to hell. I know how that is. Yeah, I would get messages saying it's not enough storage, so I went and deleted all my photos and uh, emails. Um, my question is if I'm deleting them on my computer and on my iPad, is it deleting it in the cloud or just still supported? Great question. So her question was she's getting this message that her iCloud is too full. It must be working first off, which is a good thing. You get five gigabytes of storage for free first, but you have a 16 or 32 gigabyte device and you've been taking a lot of photos, so it's pretty easy to overfill it. Now, in days past, we used to have to sync our iPhone to our computer and the iPhone would get backed up to our computer, which is still an option, but my 89-year-old mother only has an iPad, no computer. So she has no way of backing it up to a computer. So they've made it so the iPhone and the iPad can stand alone now, but they want you to make sure you have a backup in case it's lost or stolen or broken. And therefore, that's what iCloud does. Not only does it sync your contacts and all this, it backs up whatever you want it to on the cloud. And with photos, that can get fairly full. So first off, if I take a photo with this phone, and I just have this phone, it's a digital camera. The only way it will ever be deleted from this phone is if I delete it. It's in your photos. Just tap the, tap the photo and there's a little trash can. That'll delete that photo. Now, if I hook it to a Mac or a PC with a cable, it will automatically up them, upload them to the photos or pictures folder and then they will go there. But it only copies them and then it says, well, do you want to delete them from here or not? That's up to you. And the iCloud, though, backs up the entire phone, including your photos, because, uh, believe me, I had one client who, Apple wasn't able to recover it, but I was able to go in. It was the last video of her father before he passed away from months ago, and it was the most fulfilling thing in my world, is I could go back into her backup off her Mac and go way back in and recover that for her in the last photos of it when he was still alive. You know, those kinds of things are great, but it will, if iCloud would do that, but she didn't have hers on iCloud. Um, well, sometimes you'll get a message on your phone that it will not go to the computer. That it won't go to the computer. I'll get it. I thought they were supposed to be synchronous. And I'll get an email on my iPhone that it won't go to the computer. Well, that's different. So let me finish this up here. Um, so, and mail doesn't sync, by the way. Mail is all going from one place. But the, the whole deal with that is, is you can determine what you want to back up on the cloud, or you can buy extra room on the cloud. And it's money well spent if you ever lose photos or anything. Um, right now, you for 40 bucks a year, you can get 20 gigabytes of more storage, which is tons. Or in the fall, they're going to have a great program where it's going to be down. You're going to get 20 gigabytes for like a buck ninety. You know, it's really, really cheap. Now, that being said, we're talking about buying apps, the 99 cent apps, the dollar 99 apps. We're talking about using increasing storage on the cloud and everything. So you see iTunes gift cards around all over the place. You see App Store gift cards all over the place. And then there's Apple gift cards. Apple gift cards work at Apple for Apple products. iTunes and app cards are being worked in the iTunes or App Store, but I'm a very special person, and I pay I only pay twenty I pay twenty percent less for my iTunes stuff than everybody else. <laughs> Any guesses how? When iTunes gift cards are on sale, 
up to 20% off. You'll find them 10% off all the time, sometimes 15% off. Grab the gift cards, rather than using your credit card, and they store them on file. I've got like 300 bucks in my iTunes account because I bought the cards when they were 20% off. So that $1.99 app is now only, now only, what, buck 60. But you can store them on there. And the other thing is, when they're on sale, grab a bunch because you know how it is around Christmas time. All of a sudden, somebody gives you an unexpected gift, and you're looking around to see what you can re-gift from all the stuff you just got, <laughs> and you don't want to re-gift them what they gave you last year. And so, if you always have an iTunes gift card with you available, you can give them that, and you give them a $50 gift card, it only costs you 40 bucks. And if you, if, if you don't get those unexpected gifts, all of a sudden you put it into your account for your Christmas present. <laughs> hey, the part of that question was, can I delete photos from the cloud? Are they keeping all my photos in the All right, there's two ways your photos go to the cloud. One is PhotoStream. PhotoStream takes your 1,000 most recent photos up to 30 days old, and you can delete them from there, but that doesn't count against your iCloud storage space. Apple's giving that to you as a bonus. Now, to reach into iCloud and get your photos, not yet. Not to delete specific photos. So everything is Yeah, because it's not really backing up your photos, it's saying, back up everything on this phone, including all those photos, or back up everything except the photos, not just these photos. So you went into manage your iCloud and you said turn off the photos, right? You can't delete specific photos, but what'll happen is, if you delete some photos from here, this as a total will be less, not as big to back up to your iCloud. It's a, you gotta, it's, it's, I try to de-geekify de de everything, and some of the stuff I can't because there's so much bloody stuff going on. I mean, the iPhone came out, it was introduced on my birthday in 2007, and it, it's, this thing is a computer that happens to make phone calls. It does more than this computer. It's got a GPS and it's got an accelerometer. It's got all of that. I mean, it really, there's so much in here. Believe me, we haven't touched the surface of what it can do. Is there a reason you have an external hard drive if you have everything back up to the cloud? Everything doesn't back up to the cloud. Her question was, do you need to have an external hard drive? I almost went down that road, but yes. Do you have a Mac? Well, most of you were Mac users, right? PC users, you should always back up because PCs are going to die, and they die quickly, and they die bad. And <laughs> Macs and iPhones and iPads don't get viruses. Android and PCs get viruses. And, uh, and there's these things called ransomware now where your data could be gone in a heartbeat, okay? Or locked up, and then they'll make you pay money to get it out. But on the Mac, you don't have to buy a special hard drive. You just go down to Costco, buy any of the hard drives off the shelf, plug it into the computer, into the Mac, and a little window will pop up and says, hey look, I just, you just plugged in an external hard drive. Would you like to use Time Machine for that? You say, yes I would. And you tap that, and it says, well you know, that brand new drive you got, I'm gonna erase all the data off it, it's the only way I can do it. Well okay, it's a brand new drive, I don't care. Erase the data, and then every hour that it's plugged in, it will back up your computer fully. And your, your iPhone can back up there. The cloud does not back up all your data. Uh huh? To repair your screen. Right. How old was your Mac? Oh my gosh. And they said, no, get out of here? They didn't do any diagnostics? Well, they're doing the diagnostics on my Mac. No, they don't want the external hard drive because that's all your backup data. Are you using Time Machine on your Okay, so here is a perfect example. Her computer died. She has a Time Machine backup. When she would have called me, I would have said, oh, do you have a Time Machine backup? And I'd say, oh, great. Because all she does is, if she, if she has to get a new computer because of, she plugs in, you press one button, and all your data is back onto your Mac. It's so good. They don't want that. What you, they'll do is tell you how to do it when you get your Mac back. And again, it's so easy. Call me. I'll have, I can walk you through it on the phone. 
So, and the screen repair, if they can't do it there, there's another place called Core Care that can, because it may not be the screen, it may be in the logic board. It's a 2010, is it a MacBook Pro? Uh, it's, a, it's, a big it's an iMac, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for staying you. over. You all passed the test, by the way. Everyone stayed awake. The mail, what happens is both devices go out to the mail server and get the mail. And is it an Something that comes in average to the properties. Something that the properties is just not any real quick. Who's your mail for me? Get rid of that, they're the worst. AT-Mail, it's free. You can forward your AT&T and see the global documentation. I have Gmail. Yahoo! I have Gmail. Yes, I have Gmail. Yes, I have Gmail. Yes, I have Yeah, but we should just do it all. I mean, just gradually let people know it and drop the AT&T. The worst email marks. But I also tell you, get off the podcast, get off the other screen. Don't be a slave to your internet service provider. Be independent. But Gmail, you're probably not having any trouble with it. No, not at all. Yahoo's. Yahoo is not, their business is not mail. Thank you. Please go right ahead. I have Samsung, which I absolutely love. Samsung phone? Yeah, Galaxy. It makes it a little difficult for me to hear it. So I was wondering if you know how I can sync, or should, or do you just Google this? A question. Well, always, you can always Google it, because that's what I do half the time. Oh, let me how stop the recording. Save my contacts, how to get all my contacts automatically on my iPad from my Samsung. Well, who do you use? Okay, so if you use Gmail. I don't, but I'm thinking. If you've got a Gmail account, we can put all your contacts on Gmail, and then both devices can pull your contacts in there. I have to bring my passwords and stuff with me all the time because I can't remember. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I know my passwords. But I might. Oh, darn. Good time. What do you, what do you, go ahead and ask. My, my username, do you need that? No, I don't need any of that. I'm just saying, do you?